Let's get back to Brighton and the Labour Party conference because we're joined now by the former Foreign Secretary and Deputy Labour Leader Dame Margaret Beckett. Thank you very much for being with us. Now, I'm keen to talk to you about Brexit, but before we get there, I just want to find out about some of the movement, shall we say, uh, internal wranglings that the Labour Party has been going through the last couple of days because you're on the National Executive Committee. I am. Were you at the meeting when John's landsman filed this motion to get rid of the post of deputy leader, effectively ousting Tom Watson? No, I was on the M25. So you were stuck? <laughs> Absolutely stuck for a long time. And what do you make of that move? I thought it was very unwise, uh, as I think most people now agree, because and, and this is not an, an attack in any way. It's, it's inevitable that you in the media are talking about that. And as John Ashworth said very ably earlier on, that's not what we want you to be talking about, because that's not what we're here for. You were stuck on the M25. Um, <laughs> Tom Watson himself couldn't even be at the meeting because no. of childcare reasons. I mean, it sounds a bit like a coup. Well, no, I, I think it was just one of those things. It seemed to John like a good idea, so he suggested it. Do you think it's credible that Jeremy Corbyn didn't know what was happening? Absolutely. <laughs> if Jeremy was supposed to keep abreast of every little plot or idea that John Lansman has thought of, he'd go crazy. Okay. Well, let's move on to uh, Brexit, shall we? Um, Labour's current position on Brexit is to try and win a general election, obviously, and um, to try and renegotiate a Brexit deal and then have a second referendum with Remain and Leave on the ballot paper. But it hasn't said, crucially, which way it would campaign. Is that acceptable? Well, it's one, that's one of the things that we're going to have to thrash out. And there isn't any doubt there'll be different points of view. I, I think it's entirely understandable Whichever side of the, of the discussion, the argument um, you come down on, everybody's really worried about what's happening in their constituencies, what could happen in their constituencies, depending on how things go, uh, and, and really sincere in wanting to get the best way through. And I think Jeremy's been quite smart, actually, in concentrating on trying to keep people, to bring people together and to keep people together. There may come a point when we have to make more of a choice. And That's exactly view? the kind of thing. What's oh, your oh, view? My view, I'm afraid, is, is <laughs> very clear. Uh, like everybody else, or most people anyway, in after 2016, I accepted that um, we were going to leave the European Union. I listened to all the things that were said by the then Prime Minister about how we should stay close and you know, have a good constructive relationship and preserve as much as we could of what was good about our being in the European Union. And I swallowed all that. Um, and then suddenly she steps forward in Lancaster House and lays down all these totally unrealistic, crazy red lines that would, were likely to destroy many of the advantages and benefits we'd had from being in the European Union. And from then on, for me, really, it was downhill all the way. Because the, the more it went on and the more, to my mind, dangerous it got, the more worried I was about whether there was a credible deal. And, you know, I, I spent many years, 10 or 11 in the Cabinet, and most of them negotiating in, in the European Union or on behalf of the European Union. And the idea that we would be in some way linked to and bound to the rules and regulations that the European Union step, sets on all sorts of good things, workers' protection, environment and so on, without having any say of them, without even being in the room, the more I thought about that, the more I panicked. So I am now of the view, personally, that we, of course, must ask the people whether this is still what they had in mind. And then, in, in that conversation, I would say we should stay. Because none of the deals on offer, not one of them, bears any comparison to the deal we have now. But look, if you just look at what's happened with the Lib Dems, um, who were polling within touching distance of mm. Labour, are you not worried that by not taking a more decisively remain position, Labour are out of step with the members, but also a lot of your voters? Yes, I am worried about that, and I think everybody is. I, no, I don't so should think there be more of a no, clear nobody, position? Nobody has the right answer here. There are difficulties on all sides. Everybody's really worried about what's the best way to stance to take, what's the best way to approach it, and that's what we're here to discuss and thrash out at this conference. So yes, I am worried about that, but I completely accept the legitimacy of the argument by people who say that's the best thing to do. Jeremy Corbyn won't even say if he would vote leave or remain in a referendum. Is that a problem? Well, you know, if you're trying to say, as he is, let's not close the door for people, irrespective of their point of view, then you're bound to end up saying, well, hang on a minute, we don't have to decide that yet. 
but that whether that would work whether it is credible whether it's whether the electorate would accept it that's exactly the sort of thing we're trying to thrash out this week. Now, you were first elected to Parliament in 1974. Mm -hmm. That means you have seen Harold Wilson, Tony Blair, Labour's two big election winners in action. An Ipsos Mori poll out this week says that Jeremy Corbyn has got the lowest approval ratings of any opposition leader uh, all the way back to when that survey began in 1977. What is going wrong? Well, Jeremy's an unusual leader. Um, he, he comes from a very different background in politics from most of the, of the previous leaders. Uh, and he has had, I think, and, and I know this is a complaint and uh, this is the water we swim in, but he has had, I think, an unusually and continually harsh treatment by some elements in the news media. And obviously that doesn't help. Is the Brexit position part of the problem as well? What some people see as a lack of clarity? Well, it could be. Um, you know, some people like to be able to read what they want into what people say. Others want to clear, no, no, I want to know this or that. Um, you know, it could be one of the difficulties. But I don't want to over-egg this because I think it would be a big mistake. No general election is like the previous general election. Um, there isn't any doubt in 2017 when people saw Jeremy, if you like, more unfettered, that there was a very different reaction to him. And I know many of the people around Jeremy are hoping that would be the case again, and I certainly hope so too. But for me, it's a very clear, simple equation. There is only one Prime Minister in Britain. Is it going to be Boris Johnson or is it going to be Jeremy Corbyn? And I know where my cross is going. Just finally, um, talking about the next Prime Minister, there has been some talk about a government of national unity. If Boris Johnson resigns or if he's forced out um, around the time of the uh, extension or the deadline for Brexit, I was reading a piece in The Spectator uh, over the last couple of days which suggested that your name was being put forward to, as a potential leader of oh, a right. government of national unity. I mean, is that something that you would uh, consider if it was a way to stop a no-deal Brexit? I haven't seen The Spectator piece. And, and with, I mean, I completely understand why government, why people looking at all what's going on start talking about a government of national unity. I have to admit, I'm not a great believer in this likelihood myself, so I haven't spent any time agonising over whether I would. But you wouldn't rule it out? I, oh, I never rule anything out in politics, but I think a government of national unity is pretty unlikely, and we do actually have a candidate for Prime Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Dame Margaret Beckett, for being on the programme.